In this episode of The Spirit Side, we are going to continue our conversation about Philip K. Dick and also talk about his moment of gnosis and the Black Knight Satellite Connection. This show is to present certain information to the public so that we might reevaluate some of our current belief systems and understand where they originated. I hope you enjoy the show and I hope you'll take something with you from it. Let's delve into today's topic. Greetings, everyone, and welcome to The Spirit Side. I'm Paul James Caden, and today we are going to be talking about Philip K. Dick and the Black Knight Satellite Connection. We are continuing uh, a little bit into our conversation that we had on Monday, because again, I think this is important. We have a whole lot of people in the world right now who are believing and caught up in this, we'll say, aftershock of Philip K. Dick and his beliefs, his experience, and his writings. And it's much like, as I said in the last uh, last podcast, it's much like religion. You know, there are people that have certain offshoots of these ideas and these philosophies, and they don't even really know where these ideas originated from. So it's important to talk about this, to perhaps put things into perspective about why we're seeing what we're seeing in society, in the world, why there's so many people that believe in such a thing, and why they believe it. I've had uh, several people based on Monday's show uh, connect with me and say that they always wondered where a lot of the woke and truth community uh, got their ideas. You know, where did this all stem from? And of course, you know, conspiracy theories have been around for a long time and there's always been people who were, you know, very interested in them and would put forth, you know, ideas, you know, who shot JFK, what happened on 9-11, what happened in Roswell, New Mexico, when the UFO allegedly crashed. There's all kinds of theories and conspiracy theories. They've always been alive and well about secret government projects and all of this kind of thing. And and some of them uh, are, are based in reality and some of them Uh, really got uh, far flung uh, into fanaticism and, you know, the uh, Alice in Wonderland uh, arena of thinking. But I think really it was Philip K. Dick that uh, brought all of this more to the forefront of people's thinking. And that's when it really started to take off with that resurgence of Gnosticism that he started through his writings, his work, his experiences. So we're going to uh, delve a little bit more into this today. And I think on Friday we're we're going to be talking uh, just more about UFOs and aliens. And I would like to give uh, perhaps my perspective on the whole UFO phenomenon, what it might be, what it all means, uh, why are they here, what do they want, are they really walking among us, uh, as some people say, and again, for uh, for what reason would they be doing this? So uh, one conversation leads to another, and, and I think this will be an interesting week of podcasts and conversations. So let's talk about Philip K. Dick and the Black Knight Satellite Connection. Now, for those of you who may not know, the Black Knight Satellite is a foreign uh, object that has been seen uh, passing 
in close proximity of our planet in the past. It's been there and then it disappears. It comes and it goes. Uh, and people have speculated that it's an alien satellite, that it's either gathering information or maybe it's sending information to certain people who are open to its frequencies. And if you look into ufology, kind of the fringe areas of uh, ufology and psychic phenomenon, you'll, you'll run across certain people who will say that they receive this download of information about the cosmos, about alien civilizations, about the purpose of life on earth and who put us here and, you know, a whole host of information. And many of them uh, will say that they believe they received this information from the Black Knight satellite, that perhaps this was uh, some kind of satellite, some kind of device that an alien civilization was using to somehow uh, beam information to certain individuals who might be receptive or ready uh, to receive it. And, um, you know, if you want to do more research on the Black Knight satellite, uh, you, you can certainly do that. This isn't uh, a conversation where we're going to delve into the whole history of, you know, when it was first seen and, you know, the speculations about it. But uh, there are those who speculate and believe that Philip K. Dick received a lot of information that he received and had his experience with Vallis because of the Black Knight satellite. It zoomed in on him and gave him a download of information or uh, this alien civilization communicated with him for a time being, and that's when he had this experience in the February of 1974. Uh, he said that uh, at one point he saw something, he didn't know what it was, but he felt that it was intelligent, and it was, you know, flashing with all these colors, and I think this is what he uh, uh, thought maybe Vallis was this, you know, great intelligence system that was influencing humanity. But uh, also, you know, Philip K. Dick in his science fiction writings always uh, explored these ideas of alternate realities, you know, alternate worlds, alien worlds, you know, what is real, what is not real. And, uh, you know, there are some people, uh, again, who say that, you know, perhaps he received even, even his creative ideas for fiction or science fiction from uh, an outside intelligence. So actually he was getting these inspirations, these ideas to put into uh, science fiction novels, but they were actually tainted with a greater truth a greater truth about the universe, our reality. You know, what is reality? Different alien worlds. And yet there are other people who speculate that, you know, Philip K. Dick just had some kind of mental break at that point in his life in the February of 1974. Whatever happened in his apartment that day, that evening, that night, he had some kind of crisis or a mental break. And some speculate that he had this mental break because, you know, of course, everybody has problems in their lives, uh, you know, uh, maybe the pressures of life just somehow caught up with him. Uh, I guess he was kind of a thoughtful individual, you know, when it came to these alternate realities and uh, things that he wrote in his uh, fictional works. A lot of people say it was, uh, 
you know, pretty deep and pretty complex at times, and that he started thinking too much about his own science fiction work, saying, you know, wow, this stuff I'm writing about, what if it's real? What if there are alternate realities, you know, different worlds? And, you know, he just started thinking too deeply about this, and somewhere along the line, it affected him uh, mentally, psychologically, emotionally, uh, that he took himself down his own rabbit hole, so to speak, and he had some kind of uh, mental break. Others say that, uh, you know, that moment he had, uh, again, we have Gnosticism, his own moment of Gnosis, you know, coming to this uh, greater realization, you know, about himself and life and perhaps certain aspects of the universe, you know, his own inner wisdom and intuition began to open up and when he tried to explain these things in his uh, writings afterwards, some people understood, some people it resonated with, with some people uh, didn't quite understand it because it was much too complex. And some individuals that are familiar with Gnosticism say, well, you know, this is something that happens when someone experiences that moment of awakening or that moment of, you know, gnosis within themselves is that they, they have a realization and they start to see something that none of us have seen, or perhaps we haven't seen it in quite that way. And in trying to explain it, it gets kind of lost on the person that, is listening. And so, you know, for example, I was, uh, you know, watching some videos on Philip K. Dick and, you know, reading some articles and there was a gentleman from Gnosis Magazine. And, and I think uh, Philip K. Dick submitted some articles to uh, Gnosis Magazine, if I'm not mistaken. But uh, this individual, I think he was like the, the former editor and he said people that went through Gnosis would write in and send in articles to be printed in the magazine. And, you know, they would have these, uh, you know, great realizations about some geometric shape, you know, and go into all these details about, you know, what what all the, the lines and the contours and the edges, you know, and what this shape was saying to us on a deeper spiritual uh, wisdom level. Uh, but it, again, it was so complex, no one knew what they were talking about except the person who wrote the article. And so perhaps Philip K. Dick went through something like this. So again, I, I think we have to look at the modern day movement that was uh, really brought on by Mr. Dick and, and ask ourselves if... if you know, we're caught up in this tsunami of Gnosticism and government conspiracy. Is it reliable information or information that we would want to put our faith in and put our trust in? I mean, let's break that down. I mean, what if this individual, Philip K. Dick, did receive some kind of transmission from an alien satellite. Well, who sent it? Who are they? What is it? Uh, are they beaming from this satellite information that is trustworthy and meant to awaken humanity? Or is this, uh, would it be deceptive information? We would have no way of knowing. So would we want to base our entire lives, our, our, our entire perception of reality, our entire uh, spiritual foundation 
on the words and the works and the revelations and the intuitions and the information of someone that received it from an alien satellite. Something or someone outside of this world that we would have no clue who or what that is or what their intentions might be. Now, I'm not saying that that Philip K. Dick uh, received downloads from uh, the Black Knight satellite. Um, I honestly don't believe in my heart of hearts that any of these people have the claim they have. You know, I think it's just one of those things that, you know, oh, there's a satellite up there. Oh, that's so mysterious. That's, you know, so spiritual. That's so you know, esoteric, oh, you know, now there's people, you know, who are uh, channeling information from it. People are always, you know, claiming to channel from ancient spirits of the past and, you know, aliens and all this type of thing. So I don't really think anybody's ever received a download from the Black Knight satellite. But, you know, the cosmos is a big place. You know, what do I know about who or what is out there in other universes or dimensions? But either way you slice it, if this was a reality that Philip K. Dick received information from an alien satellite, I wouldn't put too much stock in that information, nor would I live my life according to that information. I would be very suspicious of such a thing, and with good reason. You know, I think also uh, goes without saying, if somehow delving into these subjects in, you know, his science fiction work, and he started to overthink uh, certain things, certain spiritual aspects, what is reality, and he had... Uh, some kind of mental or psychological break or a nervous breakdown, which happens. It absolutely happens that people can perseverate on religion or spirituality or greater questions of the universe, that they can focus so heavily on those things and it's something that they do they don't do do in a joyful way it becomes more of a burden of i've got to answer this question i've got to know and sometimes uh, when people do that it can bring a certain uh depending on what they're trying to find the answer to uh it could bring them a lot of fear a lot of anxiety a lot of uncertainty about life and death, what happens afterward, what is reality, where do we go after this. So it's definitely something that happens, and it is plausible that contemplating these questions about reality in the universe and so on and so forth, um, you know, some of the more Gnostic type of ideas that Philip K. Dick uh, had some kind of breakdown. Not beyond the realm of possibility at all. And so again, we have to ask the question, if that was the case, is this information that we would want to believe and build our lives upon? I mean, I would say absolutely not. None of us would. None of us would want to uh, base anything on any information that was given by someone who was having a nervous breakdown or you know uh, some kind of uh, psychological episode. That would just that would be unhealthy for the person, but also for the person who uh, took their advice. And again, I always say, by their fruits you shall know them. I mean, that that is one of the greatest sayings 
ever put on the printed page. Because it, it, it is 100% true 100% of the time. If you look at a person and what they're doing, who they're involved with, what their goals in life are, you can generally tell if it's a good or a bad thing based on how the person involved is acting, how it affects their life, how it affects their relationships, how it affects them spiritually, how it affects them emotionally and psychologically. And when you see people that are really given into fanaticism or anger or uh, divisiveness, fear or self-delusion, uh, those are usually not good things and those are usually telltale signs, especially in the realm of uh, spiritual things that it's probably not a good idea to go any deeper down that rabbit hole because something is amiss. You know, let's think about uh, what the fruits of the Spirit are said to be, to be, you know, love, joy, peace, you know, all these wonderful things. I mean, you, you, you can look them up. Um, if we don't see, especially love, I mean, that's that's one of the big ones for me, you know, all of my life. You know, if I don't see the love of God, if I don't feel the love of God out of a religion or a person or a teacher, I, uh, I, I don't hesitate to, you know, get away from that situation or that person very quickly. And it's never, it's never failed me to have that outlook because I've seen that person and the people around them just sour so badly in their thoughts, in their attitudes, in their personalities. It becomes very dark, you know, and this is what we're looking at when we see a lot of this uh, conspiracy and Gnostic belief in the world today. It's like these people don't have peace. They talk a good game. But once someone strikes up a conversation with them or disagrees with them or says, I see things differently than that, they just criticize and hate and berate and stalk and become angry. It's, uh, it's not a healthy thing. And I say all that to get back to, you know, Philip, uh, Philip K. Dick, wherever, you know, his information came from, Black Knight Satellite, Nervous Breakdown, the fruits of what it has caused, even the fruits in his own life. I mean, they say toward the end of his life, he was absolutely obsessed with these government conspiracies and alternate realities and you know that uh, he could be a bit uh, paranoid and obsessed with all of this and i think if you take those words paranoid and obsessed and sadly look at a lot of people in the truth and woke communities and even some of these uh woke christian gnostic uh groups and communities uh, you know, I'm not picking in on, on anybody here, but those words seem to fit very, uh, very comfortably into their persona. And so I think that's something definitely to think about. And we also have to uh, consider, you know, well, what if Philip K. Dick had this awakening, this great uh, internal realization about his life or life in the universe or the way things really work or reality. He had this moment of gnosis. Is it 
still something that we we would want to base our reality upon? Is it something we would want to build, you know, make the foundation of what we believe? Because obviously, again, you can go back to, by their fruits you shall know them. What did this do to Philip K. Dick? Some people thought he lost his mind. He was nuts. Again, there was that, there was that uh, obsession. There was that uh, paranoia. There was those moments of fanaticism. I mean, he really went deep down into that black hole, and, and sometimes it was pretty weird. And when I say pretty weird, not in a positive or enlightening way. You know, sometimes you just look at a person or read something that they've written or you, you look at a photograph and you just get the feeling, man, there's, there's something there that's really just crumpling this person up inside. I, I, I don't see peace. I don't feel peace. Something's wrong. And that's certainly something that I feel when I uh, delve into the mind and life of Philip K. Dick. And some other people did as well because they thought he was just having some kind of, you know, break. Some kind of psychotic break. So if he had a moment of gnosis... And this was his realization. Again, what are the fruits of it? In his life and in the lives of the people that followed. I would say that if he had a moment of notice, whatever caused that moment, if it was influenced by some spiritual entity, or outside unknown spiritual influence, it probably wasn't good based on some of the things he said, some of the ways it uh, made him act at times. Not that he was a raving lunatic or anything of that nature, but... You know, you can find snippets of videos where, you know, he's talking about some of these things, and there's just something about him that you could tell something's off. Like I said, he's not doing this out of great interest or out of great love and joy for the subject. There's something else. And it seems heavy. So if there was a spiritual energy or entity that caused this gnosis moment, uh, I would venture to say it probably wasn't good. It seems like it would be something negative, something that was ultimately harmful to him and a lot of the people that followed in his footsteps caught wind of all of this and what has blossomed into uh, the modern day movement um, of a lot of these uh, Gnostic and uh, woke and truth communities. Because they, they blend all of these ideas of, you know, Gnosticism and government conspiracy and alternate realities and the Matrix. And um, I've yet to meet any of those people that have joy in their lives. It's like coming out of a cult when you see people that have 
left that sort of thing. They say, you know, what a relief it is. It's hard not to go back because it's very addicting, they say. But they say what a relief it is to wake up every day and just not go to the computer and see, you know, what terrible, you know, secret thing is happening today. You know, that horrible, terrible agenda in the matrix, in those that are in charge. What a relief it is to not live that way anymore. Because you were always nervous. They were always on end. You know, they were always, oh, what's next? Almost like nail biting, edge of the seat. What are they going to do now? What's next? What's happening? That's not healthy. And I suppose somewhere down the line, we really do have to have a conversation about this false god that supposedly uh, oversees and runs the false, fake world. If this wasn't information that came from, as they say, the god, if it didn't come from the light, if it didn't come from the creator of all, then where did it come from? What might that purpose be? What would be the agenda? What would be the end game of an entity or entities getting us to question our own reality? And to look around us and say, well, no, God didn't make this. This is an evil place. This is a prison planet. This is a matrix Everything here is a lie, and it's, you know, what would be, what would be the ultimate end game of all of that? And man, that's something we could uh, speculate later on, I think, until the, uh, the cows come home. But perhaps uh, down the line, uh, that's uh, something we should talk about. Because it's it's a question that bears answering or at least thinking about. I don't think we could fully answer, you know, exactly if they're, you know, something like Valis or, uh, you know, an entity or a group of entities, you know, perpetuated this idea that we live in this fake reality ruled by a fake God. You know, where, where is that taking us? What, what are they hoping to gain by that? And what are the dangers of you and I jumping on that ship and going, oh, yeah, it's, you know. I mean, we've already talked about on Monday's show where this whole Matrix idea came from based on Gnosticism and influenced by Gnosticism and the work of Philip K. Dick. And, you know, we talked about him. We talked about him more here with the Black Knight satellite, the possible, uh, you know, nervous psych or psychotic break, uh, the moment of gnosis, where that could have came from. Was it a good thing? Was it a bad thing? Looking at the fruits of his, his life, how it affected him, how it affected people after him. And see, that's enough for me if, if I didn't doubt that kind of thing already, I would look at this evidence and say, yeah, this, uh, this seems pretty creepy. Something doesn't seem right here. Maybe I better uh, back off, even if it's uncomfortable, because I've invested so much time into all of this and this new belief system. Maybe I better back up a little bit and, and reevaluate, because uh, this seems a little spooky to me. And it does. It really does. And I hope this, uh, you know, makes you think as well, if, if you're someone who, you know, buys into that movement. 
We, as, I, as I said in the last show, we we don't always get the truth and the full picture from people on the internet, no matter how wonderful they seem. Because I know enough people, especially on the YouTube platform, that preach and teach this kind of thing. And I can tell you, straight up, honest to God, the only thing they really care about is how many followers they have and the money. Even though they claim they, you know, they care about their followers, they love them so much. Mm, I'm not so sure about that. But hey, what do I know? You know, I'm just a putzo with a microphone. <laughs> uh, you know, trying to... Uh, Put bits and pieces of things together and, I don't know, trying to be a voice of reason, I guess. You know, I always say, wouldn't it be great to do podcasting full-time and, 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 and make a living doing this? I think that would be great. But whether I do or whether I don't, I'm here because I love doing it. And I like being real with people. Am I right all the time about things? No. But I try to be as honest, as upfront, and as reasonable, and as logical as I can. And if that helps somebody, or somebody hears what I say and say, wow, I got something out of that, then I'm a happy man. Am I giving myself a big old pat on the back there? No, I'm trying not to. Because, yeah, you know, pride goeth before a fall. Anyway, <laughs> I'm rambling on here. I just hope, uh, you know, someone got something out of this show today. Uh, it will make us think about what we believe, where some of these ideas come from. And uh, question that source. Does it feel right to you if you're caught up? In, you know, this new wave of Gnostic Christianity, conspiracy, QAnon, Trump cults, they're all splinter groups of the Philip K. Dick phenomenon. Can you now look at it and say, yeah, this seems a little spooky, maybe I better reevaluate. Because this, this is creepy stuff, and it is. It definitely is. So I appreciate you listening. And uh, again, I hope someone got something out of this today. And until next time, stay safe, stay well, stay in the light. And I will talk to you next time here on the Spirit Side.